get into the actual video today, I'd just like to say that an early access copy of my book for the first two chapters, Hello Swift, iOS Programming for Kids and Other Beginners, has been released. You can find it at the link in the description. I really hope it helps you along your journey of learning iOS development through Swift. So hello there, my name is Tanya Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over how to import tool chains into Xcode. So let's begin. Uh, first of all, if you're new to the concept, uh, I'm just going to be explaining this from scratch. So to begin, what is Xcode in the first place? Most of you already know this, and if you do, you can skip. I'll have an annotation on screen sometime right now. Okay, now it's gone. Uh, so if you click on that, you would be able to uh, skip to the Mac part where I actually import tool chains and text code. But continuing, if you're new to this, uh, here's an explanation from scratch of what a tool chain is, what Xcode is, and what the language is that we're actually programming in. So let's begin. First of all, what is Xcode? Xcode, okay, Xcode is essentially your IDE. Now, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, okay, and essentially what you're going to do here is Xcode makes it easy for you to edit your files, your .swift files, uh, assuming that Swift is the language you're uh, programming in. However, Xcode does things like code completion, it debugs the code for you without having you, to, without you having to use the command line. Alright, so now basically, that's basically the advantage of Xcode, but one thing. What if there are two different versions of Swift, and instead of installing two different Xcodes to run those two different versions of Swift, you could use one version of Xcode, but have both the versions of Swift inside of that version of Xcode, and you could build and debug for both those versions, and even have everything like code completion ready for you to use in Xcode. Well, here's where our tool chain comes in. So let's uh, start explaining that. So now, Swift is the... Oh, it fell. <laughs> All right, so now, Swift is the language that we're programming okay, inside of Xcode, I assume. You can also do it in the command line, like Java, but it's easier to do it in Xcode. Okay, so let's just uh, say Swift over here. All right, so now, as we know, Swift has been open sourced. All right, this means the code is available for everyone to use, and this means that there's a lot of different builds for Swift, even version 3, which is very, not even very close to uh, the, its beta release yet. Uh, we still have builds of it because it's open source, and that means Apple is free to actually release everything to the public already. All right, so now Swift. Right now, Xcode is in version 7.3.1. Okay, let's just write that down. So Xcode is in version 7.3.1. Now Swift is in version 2, all right? It's in version 2, however, there is a beta for version 3, or actually a developer build, I guess, a developer build for version 3 of Swift. All right, so now, how do we get Swift 3 onto an Xcode that was built for Swift 2? Sounds complicated, but it's actually really easy due to a new feature Apple has in Xcode 7.3. Let's take a look at it. All right, so basically, what we're going to be doing is Xcode has a new feature called tool chains. Essentially, what this allows you to do is Swift 2 is just a dot .xc toolchain file, all right, a dot .xc toolchain file. Now, this contains everything about Swift, the core libraries, the actual runtime, how to do code completion on it, everything, all right? And then what Xcode does is it takes this .xe toolchain file and, you know, it's, it's coded in a way for it to understand this and essentially allow you to debug apps, do code completion and everything, even syntax highlighting inside of Xcode, all right? However, what you can do is from the swift.org website, which is actually where they release the public uh, builds of Swift, you can actually download the XC toolchain file of Swift 3. All right, then what you need to do is, uh, actually you won't be downloading the XC toolchain file, you'll be downloading a dot, uh, an installer file, uh, which will install an XC toolchain file into your uh, Xcode. And then basically all you need to do is it's really simple. In Xcode 7.2 it was a bit harder, uh, but it was possible through the command line, uh, but in Xcode 7.3 they've released a nice little GUI feature for you to do it. Uh, and so now all you need to do is go to Xcode, uh, 
tool chains and then select the one that you'd like to use. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to be explaining to you now in the Mac part. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that little clip. But now it's time to get over to the Mac part where I'm going to be explaining to you how you can actually install these tool chains to Xcode. Let's get to oh, it. Welcome back to the Mac part. And now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually import uh, tool chains into your Xcode project or actually Xcode IDE in general, not just a specific project. So let's begin. So to begin, you actually need to have a tool chain to use. So I'm going to be getting mine through swift.org. So let's get that. First, I'm going to make my face a bit smaller so it's less of a distraction. Uh, put that in the corner there. All right. So now let's continue. Let's go over to swift.org. Now this is again where they host sort of all the downloads, the uh, documentation and stuff. Uh, and I'm going to be downloading uh, the chunk development uh, snapshot uh, for Xcode. So I'm going to click on Xcode. All right. Uh, and so now as you can see, this is going to download. Uh, so this might take up to five or 10 minutes actually on my connection. Uh, but for you, it'll mostly be uh, five minutes. Uh, so uh, I guess let's just speed up the clip now. Right, so as you can see, it is now done downloading. All right, so now as you can see, this package file is done downloading. Uh, and if I click on it, it opens up an installer. Now, again, one thing you do have to make sure about, uh, and this is actually really important, uh, is that up here in this little side, there should be this little lock button. And if you click it, it should show this little certificate. Uh, this actually proves that this is actually signed by Apple. Uh, and this isn't some sort of third party fake something. Uh, and so, yeah, this is the actual real thing. And if you have actually downloaded this from Swift.org itself, and you do not see that little lock sign, you should report that to Swift. Um, let me see where that email is. Um, well, I mean, that email will be in the description. I'll put that in. Or actually, never mind. That's it right here. Um, swift-infrastructure at swift.org. That's sort of the email you want to contact and say as much details with as much detail as possible, uh, what's happening, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and so, anyway, let's continue now. Uh, all right, so let's just click on the continue button over here. Uh, then I'm going to click on install. Then I'm going to type in my password. And as you can see, this is going to write files and stuff, and uh, it's going to install the package, and it's done. All right, so now as you can see, I'm going to click on close, and let's open up Xcode now. All right, so I'm opening up Xcode. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Now as you can see, if I go into about Xcode, I'm running version 7.3.1 and the build uh, number if you'd like that for verification. Uh, but basically, uh, that's not supposed to happen. Let's just... Uh, all right, so now let's just quit and reopen that. You won't have to do that step. That's just I who have to do it. Uh, so now, as you can see, Xcode is now running. Okay, so now let's just click on File, New, uh, Project. Now again, Playgrounds are not completely supported uh, with these sorts of snapshot builds. Uh, and I have not yet enabled that snapshot build. I'm still running Swift 2. All right, Swift dot, uh, let's see, the current latest version is Swift 2.2.1. Uh, so I'm running Swift 2.2.1 right now, and I'm going to create a command line tool, uh, and I'm going to call this uh, hello world lowercase. All right, sounds weird, but I'll tell you what this means. All right, so now I'm going to go into main.swift, and as you can see, it, it says print hello world here. Uh, however, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say print hello world dot lowercase. Uh, can the auto uh, complete thing work here? Uh, lowercase string. Yeah, lowercase string. All right, so now if I were to remove lowercase string, which is actually very self explanatory, all it really does is it just makes hello world all lowercase, all right? Uh, but if I do run this without uh, putting that in, as you can see, 
uh, it gives us hello world. However, if I do put in dot lowercase string, and if I click on debug, then as you can see, lower uh, hello world is a lowercase string. However, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Xcode, not quit, and then I'm going to click on this little Xcode menu here. Then click on tool chains, all right, then as you can see, there are actually quite a few little options here. So I'm going to click on Swift Development Snapshot 2016-0509, which is the current build that I just downloaded, and click on it, all right. So now as you can see, I'm going to click on Quit and Reopen. And this will essentially change our toolchain in Xcode. Now we can use Swift 3, that little developer snapshot there. All right, so now let's go back into Xcode and let's open that uh, file back up. So we're going to have to open it manually, unfortunately. Hello world, lowercase, and open up the Xcode project. Uh, so now, as you can see, we have this lowercase string here, but if I try to run it, what's this? I have an error. Lowercase string has been renamed to lowercase. And as you can see, we're now running Swift 3. Uh, so in Swift 3, uh, a change is basically lower, instead of lowercase string, we have lowercase and as a function. All right, so now if I run this again, it should give us the same old output uh, right over here in this little debug area. Let's take a look at it and wait for it. So as you can see, any second now, hello world lowercase. And if I were to remove dot lowercase, we are going to see hello world in some caps uh, and that was it for this video today I hope you enjoyed and if you did please make sure to like the video and share it of course uh, you might even want to su consider subscribing to my YouTube channel it really does help out a lot if you do like my content uh, and yeah if you have any questions you can email me at tajimani at gmail.com you can even tweet at me at tajimani and you can also um, or write a comment down below on this video. That's going to be it for this tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.